Welcome to Biocom 2021, BCA's first online conference. So we have our keynote speaker, Adam Cooper. Thanks, Connie. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to kick off this um, digital 90th. This is actually the 90th annual meeting of the Biocommunications Association. Our thoughts and our uh, program has uh, shifted. We, you know, when we were going to meet in person, we were going to do more of a hands-on workshop type of thing. I wanted to, I think some people who have experience, I don't know your level of experience with Lightroom and Photoshop uh, and how they work together. The new Lightroom, uh, past couple of years, they've been uh, connected, really connected. So Lightroom and Photoshop, again, I don't work for Adobe, but it's $10 a month if you pay for the whole year. You get Photoshop, Lightroom, and Bridge, and you always stay on the latest version of it for mm -hmm. your operating system. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, a number of different things for architecture photography and how a certain number of functions that we can do in Lightroom and then bring it into Photoshop, bring it back into Lightroom and to create a final image. Here is my Lightroom interface. And what I've done here is I've imported, I've imported uh, photos it's not exactly the same as what you have downloaded, but I separated the, the pictures into uh, projects. So there's one project that you can see, we're just gonna start with this project, even though it's labeled project four. Um, you know, just to backtrack a little bit, um, you can bring photos into Lightroom two ways. One is you just click import and you can import it directly into a folder from a camera card or you could take your camera card and just drag the photos, uh, the whole folder into your hard drive and then import that folder by hitting add. So let's start with, with this project first, this, this photo. I'm gonna make it big so you could see it. This is an interior. It's going to sharpen up right now. It's, it's sort of rendering the file. This is um, an interior architecture photos taken with the Nikon the D850 with the Sigma rectilinear lens, the 12 to 24 Sigma rectilinear lens. And what it does is, is it may be a wide angle lens and you get angles of, of vertical lines, but there's no curvature on this lens, okay? So um, when you're shooting real estate and you're shooting architecture, you try to avoid that curvature. You don't wanna shoot with a fisheye lens with curvature. You wanna shoot with what they call the rectilinear lenses to have the straight lines. Um, but we're going to fix that to make it make the vertical lines perpendicular and, and straight. The other part of uh, architecture photography is my, this is my philosophy of it. I like to shoot an architecture photo uh, with the, what I call the natural light or the architectural lighting in the room. So if you have a designer that's bringing in fixtures that have very bright lights or you you have um, open sh open light you want to see the outside uh, and you want to see the shadow on the inside so what we do is we'll bracket okay and in the old days you could just bracket and once you hit a perfect exposure it was you know that you thought that was okay but we're going to make this this main exposure better so what i do is i bracket in two stops and five frames so I have really, really uh, able to get the highlight detail and then really, really able to get this shadow detail um, in, these, in these photos. So we're gonna be using JPEGs for now that I made from the raw files. The better way to do this obviously is to use your raw files because when we create the HDR in Lightroom, it creates a new raw file. So it, with all the data from the five images put together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna select these five images. And um, let me see, I'm gonna just do it here too. So I'm gonna select these five images. So you can do it in a number of ways, just the same way that you would select. You, you click one, hold down the shift key and click the last one. So there's your group. And then what I do is I right click and when you right click in here, you get a menu. Can everybody see that menu? Might mm -hmm. be a little bit small. 
but okay. there is a photo merge menu here. Right so you can do a panorama, you could do an HDR panorama, which takes a, takes, could take an hour to render out, but we're just gonna do the straight HDR. Let's try the bedroom. So now we have a window. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I tried it before and hopefully it's gonna work. Adam, did you just select photo merge HDR? Yes. There it goes. Hopefully it's gonna work this time. How many stops did you say you do? On two plus two nine? stops, two stops, five images. So it's 10 stops range, 10 stops. Okay. Goodness. How about a little applause for Lightroom? <laughs> So now you have um, really, there's not too many things, there's no many adjustments that you could do in this HDR in Lightroom. It's pretty straightforward. And um, again, it gives you a raw file. So I'm gonna hit merge. And what it's going to do is it's gonna create a new um, HDR uh, DNG file because Adobe deals with the DNG raw, um, you know, the, the DNG. It becomes a DNG. So hopefully, here it goes. On top here, it's going to uh, process that now. Obviously, the faster the computer you have, the the better you'll you will have with uh, with your processor and how fast you're going to roll. Well, I'm able to bring everybody up now. <laughs> so we have now um, we have now. HDR.dng. That's a raw file. Okay. Does did anybody do this part yet? Would you like to do it? Let's get to this point. No, we'll watch you. Okay. So now you have when you had a when you had the starting with the raw files and you get a raw file, there's a lot more data, um, you know, digital data, for example, in the in the highlights that you could bring down. So now I can go into develop and I can, I can still adjust, you know, it's an HDR file. I can now adjust and I can go to, um, let's see, I can do my basic. I can check my color balance. I know my ceilings are generally white. I can adjust my exposure back and forth, whatever I wanted to do. I can do it on my, on my histogram. I can actually, just click the highlights and bring the highlights down a little bit. Um, and I can, so, so you see that the settings were already set to a, an HDR setting. So the highlights are sort of all the way down. The shadows are all the way up. Contrast might be a little bit. And sometimes, you know, the today's, in today's um, photography world, a lot of people like to pop up the vibrance on these type of things. So, you know, again, this is not medical scientific photography. This is, can be a little bit of art. This is for selling. So we can just pop up the, the vibrance and you can see like in the bedspread, these blues and these browns, they pop a little bit. Okay, so then the next thing that I would do here is um, if I needed to, if I couldn't really get much more highlight details, another great thing in, in Lightroom is the um, hue, saturation, and luminance. Does everybody see that right here? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I can take my um, saturation and I might want to saturate and, and, and fix, I want to see these trees a little darker. So I'm going to take my saturation first and I know that they're green. So I'm going to up the saturation in the greens and I'm going to take the luminance down of the green and watch what happens. Mm. So okay, that's just on the green. Yes. Adam, traditionally uh, with, in Photoshop, what you do is you select out that window right. now and then just change the exposure. Can you do that? You because then it keeps right. the colors, it keeps right. the colors instead of breaking up different saturations and making it look psychedelic, yeah. like a little bit of LSD. <laughs> uh, well, you, you, there's also called moderation. 
what what you could do is here it, it's it's not as good as in photoshop the detail is not as good as in photoshop but you could spend you could you could move in you could zoom in let me get the navigator up um you could zoom in and you can you can take the um this is the what they call the adjustment brush up here and you could do really anything you want here's a uh preset burn so if i wanted to with a um and you can see the um the edge there's an edge right here that's a that's a uh a feather you can change the feather by coming in here and whoops i turned off the brush hold on by coming in here and adjusting the brush the flow the density the feather see i could bring my feather up and down i could change the size you could do that with your scroll wheel too on which is nice this is different than photoshop i like being able to use my scroll wheel on my mouse and change the size of my brush so go ahead hey adam would you agree that there's you know there's not one uh, method to this because like from what, I'm, from, from, from what i'm seeing with a lot of um with this hdr stuff that you kind of like assisted me with a couple of months ago um, I haven't used it much because there really hasn't been any jobs. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, this is great right. to catch up on. But would you agree? Because sometimes I know, like when you do Photoshop, you know, you might use one tool to do something and then you're going to another tool to do something else. Would you think, would you categorize HDR as kind of one of those things where like you, you bring it a little bit like 20% here, then 10% here, then you're like using right. a brush here. You're using different tools basically still, right? Yeah. And, and Lightroom is definitely limited in that respect. In other words, in other words, the, the Lightroom is, is, is really what the, what it, the name is light. It's a, it's, it doesn't have all the full features of Photoshop, but you can, in other words, you can't do layers at all. Right. If you're going to, and we're going to talk about that, but there's more control for what you're saying. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can really do a lot in Lightroom. I mean, I can be precise and I can, I can, um, Let's just take the exposure all the way down. And what's what's nice about the it's all non-destructive. It's completely non-destructive without layers in Lightroom. So I'm gonna burn in, I'm gonna burn in this this window here just by I'm I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking. Okay. And now I'm gonna very make a, a larger uh, brush. I'm just doing this really quick just for demonstration. I'm gonna even make a larger brush. And now I'm just going to just going to fill this part in. Okay, so now what I did was I just lowered this, lowered the opacity. And I can go back and I can erase like I went over uh -huh. here. I can erase this. See that? Now I can go back and I can select even when I'm off, when I hit done, I can so go back to the brush. And there is a dot now right there, that dot. You see my hand? That dot now is selected. So now I can go back and I can make all these adjustments just of this, what I painted in. Okay. So if I wanted to change the. Hey, Adam, would you agree that there's, you know, there's not one uh, method to this? Because like from what, I'm, from, from, from what I'm seeing with a lot of, um, with this HDR stuff that you kind of like assisted me with a couple of months ago. Um, I haven't used it much because there really hasn't been any jobs. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, this is great right. to catch up on. But would you agree? Because sometimes I know, like when you do Photoshop, you know, you might use one tool to do something and then you're going to another tool to do something else. Would you think, would you categorize HDR as kind of one of those things where like you, you bring it a little bit like 20% here, then 10% here, then you're like right. using a brush here. You're using different tools basically still, right? Yeah. And, and Lightroom is definitely limited in that respect. In other words, in other words, the the Lightroom is 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 really what the what it, the name is light. It's a, it's it doesn't have all the full features of Photoshop. But you, in other words, you can't do layers at all, right? If you're gonna, and we're gonna talk about that. But there's more control for what you're saying, right? Yeah, I mean, you can really do a lot in Lightroom. I mean, I can be precise, and I can I can. Um, Let's just take the exposure all the way down. And what's what's nice about the it's all non-destructive. It's completely non-destructive without layers in Lightroom. So I'm gonna burn in, 
I'm going to burn in this this window here just by I'm, I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking. OK, and now I'm going to very make a, a larger uh, brush. I'm just doing this really quick just for demonstration. I'm going to even make a larger brush. And now I'm just going to just going to fill this part in. OK, so now what I did was I just lowered this lowered the opacity. And I can go back and I can erase like I went over here. I can erase this. See that? Now I can go back and I can select even when I'm off, when I hit done, I can so go back to the brush. And there is a dot now right there. That dot, you see my hand? That dot now is selected. So now I can go back and I can make all these adjustments just of this, what I painted in. Okay, so if I wanted to change the contrast, the highlights, I could bring more highlight in now. If I don't want to use, I, if I don't want that whole um, area, and also there's a button down here, by the way, guys, there's a button down here that says show selected mask overlay. So when you click that, it shows what you are on. So this is the red area, you see that? That's the mask overlay. That shows me what I just painted. So if I didn't like this area to be um, affected by that brush, I can now just erase that and erase the bedding. I can go in with a smaller brush. So you do have a lot of precision here. As much time as you want to spend, I want to wipe out this this uh, frame, this photo, and now uh, and now we hit done, and um, it's. It's less tungsten, right? So now there's a uh, there's a button. I think it works the same on, yeah, the backslash button. So the, you can use. There's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but this is the one. You know, I only use the ones that I like. <laughs> so the backslash shortcut, press it. You press that. It shows you the before, and then you press it again, and it shows you the after. So before, and after. Did everybody see that? So now what I want to do is I'm getting it close. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that these lines are straight. Look at the door. OK, I don't like that, that that it looks like it's at an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to my. To my menu here, I'm in the develop module, by the way, I forgot to tell you that I'm going to go to the transform module here. And you can do now vertical, horizontal, a rotated aspect is stretching, the scale making it bigger, moving it, moving it X, Y. Basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do the simplest thing that's possible. I'm just going to hit auto. Let's see what happens. When I hit auto, it's going to process, and there it is. So. Now the lines have straightened out. Everything seems to be straight. Does everybody see that? Yep. I can show you the before and now the after. Here's where we're going to jump into Photoshop. What I'm going to do here is one of the things that, that goes on in, in commercial and real estate photography is that it's been a big, it's been a big thing to be able to um, not have black TVs. It just doesn't look good just to have a black TV. So what we do is we'll take a photo and we'll we'll place that on the TV. Now, you can't do that in Lightroom. This is why you need Photoshop. Lightroom and Photoshop are connected. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click or option click on this photo and I'm going to uh, edit in the same menu, but it's now it's the edit in menu and I'm going to edit in Photoshop. And then what it does is it will open it up. I'm going to edit a, I'm going to just edit the original is fine. The other way I'm going to show you next. So now my Photoshop opens up and you're going to see that photo is going to open. So here's that photo. Okay. I'm going to go back to Lightroom and I'm going to edit in, edit my photo that we, that we worked with. Right, this is the finished photo. It's almost finished, right? We're going to right click on it and edit in Photoshop. 
and we'll jump to Photoshop and it should open for us. So now we have this photo that is the, um, and again, again, when you, when you do the merging in Lightroom, it creates a raw file. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just grab this photo and just drop it into, what it's going to do is it takes the photo from one file and it drops it onto your file as a layer. And then um, again, what, what it will do is it will create a TIFF file, a layered TIFF file. And when you close it and save it, it's going to bring it back into Lightroom automatically as a TIFF file. And we'll show you that. So now you can see that there are two layers. You have the background layer and you have your photo. And um, that doesn't look so great right now, right? So we're going to first make it smaller. And uh, on the Mac, on the PC, you just click the corner and it stays in proportion. But on the Mac, I believe you'd have to hold the shift key down, correct? Right. So now what I do is I bring it to about the size of the TV and um, just double click to make that happen. And now what I'll do is I'm going to bring my opacity down so I can see what I'm doing on this layer. So now I can sort of see where it is. And um, there's a number of different ways you can do this, but there's a keyboard shortcut. Um, if you control click, and I believe it's command click on the Mac, you can control click and you see the arrow turns white. And now it becomes um, where you can skew it and do whatever you want. So now what, all I do is I take the corners and I place it in the corner of the TV. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be um, measured or anything, it's just by visual. And I'll bring that in. And now it looks like we're getting there. And you can zoom in and you can see, again, this is Photoshop. You double click. And, and now it, it looks like the picture is on the TV. Mm. Okay, so the other thing is that people um, forget to do is they'll bring their opacity way back to 100%. Now that looks fake, right? So what I'll do is I'll bring the opacity of that layer down to like 50%. And now you can see the reflection from this light in, in the screen. So now you have a real, a very realistic view of what it could be with uh, the video on in real life. All you have to do is close it and save it. From Photoshop, just hit save. You don't do a save as, you just do a regular save and it automatically jumps back to Lightroom. Save changes to the Adobe Photoshop document before closing, yes, you just save it. Now this could take a long time and um, it gives you a indication of the percentage up here. When it gets to 100%, you, we will jump back to Lightroom and there will be a brand new file there. It will be a TIFF file. Uh, Photoshop creates and saves it into your Lightroom catalog. Then all I do is I uh, export all my edited TIFFs to JPEGs and the project is done. Very easy. You know what? When you do things like this, when you go the extra mile and you are a professional, it creates a better clientele for you. It's the fact that it, it's not taking pictures with a cell phone doing real estate photography. This is the way to do it. One of the ways to do it. It's a much better way than shooting on your cell phone. And you have a product that that um, elevates the sales of your clients, so they come back to you. Um, and for for marketing, for hospitals, for interior architecture, this is the way to go. Even in even in you know um, hospital rooms where you know if they've built out a new hospital room, a specialty room or whatever, and there's a TV, you could do this process, and um, it. It just it, it adds a level of professionalism to your product.